This has been the week when Rishi Sunak faced the revolt of the right in Parliament, when Boris Johnson faced the Privileges Committee over the accusation of lying to the Commons. It's therefore a week that's been important for the government, for Rishi Sunak in particular, and of course important for how the Labour Party regards the next year to 18 months ahead and the speed of the change they still need to make. My overall position as somebody who wants a Labour victory at the next election is that I'm alarmed that perhaps Labour is underestimating Rishi Sunak and I think the Prime Minister is doing far better than a lot on the centre-left have noticed so far. And this week was more evidence of that, really. Two things. First of all, Boris Johnson. He was like a, an old lion, I thought, uh, in a cage, shorn, no longer quite so convincing, getting quite tetchy, getting quite angry at some of the questioning. The question is, why did you not take proper advice? Nobody raised with me uh, or, uh, or had any concern before I stood up on, 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 on uh, December the 1st uh, about those events. You did not ask. I asked. I did. So, this is complete nonsense. Now, this was an evidence session, so there's no slam dunk moment. But looking at the seven MPs questioning him, the real four dangerous ones are the four Tories, of course. It didn't seem to me that they were convinced. I think it's likely that they will reprimand him for knowingly misleading Parliament and that they will lay down some kind of punishment. The guidance does not say uh, you can have a thank you party and as Sorry, many people can, in the room let, as you like just, okay, if you think it's very important to thank people. The guidance doesn't say that. If the punishment is 10 days or more of suspension from the Commons, then that allows a by-election to be triggered, a recall petition so-called, in Uxbridge, uh, voters in Uxbridge, I think a tenth of them, would have to sign a letter saying we want a by-election, in which case he would have to face a by-election. If he decided to stand there and was defeated, that's the end of him. But it's a really, really humiliating thing for a former prime minister. But Tory MPs I've been talking to say that actually any kind of verdict of guilty uh, for misleading parliament would be devastating and he could never come back. Even more important, I think, this week has been the revolt of the right. Now, ever since Rishi Sunak became prime minister last year, there's been this shadow hanging over him, a kind of dragon snorting and growling. Um, the great, great revolt of the right in the Conservative Party about to sweep him away, and he's never quite his own man. You know, they're keeping an eye on him. They're not prepared to let him do what he wants to do, and all of that. Well, this week it happened. The right revolted over his deal with the EU on Northern Ireland. And in some ways, it was quite an impressive revolt. You know, you had two former prime ministers, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss. You had three former leaders of the Conservative Party, them and Ian Duncan Smith. You had a lot of household names in people like Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, in that revolt as well. And yet, somehow, there was only 22 of them. Now, that's a lot of generals and very few foot soldiers behind them. It was a very minor revolt in the end. True, 48 Tory MPs also abstained in the vote, which is ominous for Sunak. But nonetheless, if this is the worst they can do on the issue that unites them more than any other and gets them going more than any other relations with the EU post-Brexit, then it's not a very, very impressive revolt. And I think Rishi Sunak will be greatly relieved by it. So I think he sleeps better this week. We found a resolution and hopefully we can just get back to doing what you all want to do. So I hope that's really good news. You look around you and you see an awful lot of the things that he promised to deal with. The strikes, problems in the National Health Service, the nurses' settlement allows that process to start at least. Really big progress on the rail strikes with Mick Lynch as well. Got through the budget, which wasn't a great budget in my view, but nonetheless didn't create any great huge immediate problems for him and was widely welcomed in, in areas around childcare and so on. So he's tick, 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 tick and the Northern Ireland deal with the EU, and the summit with President Macron, which seems to have gone pretty well and given him more hope on the migration issue with France, and the deal with President Biden and the Australians over AUKUS. Now, there are always problems. There's bumps in the road. We've heard this. We were told that inflation is coming down bit by bit by bit. This week it jumps up. Nonetheless, this air 
of busy competence, of scurrying around Whitehall, sorting out one problem after another. People have said to me, this is the most proactive, hard-working, engaged Prime Minister since the early days of Tony Blair. He is going to do better than perhaps people thought at the beginning of his prime ministership. I think Labour will still win the election because I think Labour have the great good luck, apart from anything else, of the implosion of the Scottish National Party north of the border, which should give them some more seats, get them over the line. But I think this is going to be a very, very tight race now between Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak. We have seen at one poll so far dramatically slashing the Labour lead from about 20 points to 10. I think we're going to see more of this, which is why I call it squeaky bum time for the Labour Party. They really have to accelerate the development of policy, sharpen the language and be clearer and really think of themselves not as an opposition party with a year or so to sort things out in terms of policy and think about what they want to say, but as an opposition party in a very, very fast and quite short race to the election. In sum, for the Conservatives, it seems to me to be a week that gives them that little tiny glimmer of hope again, a bit of optimism. It might not be a disaster in the end. And that allows more authority to accumulate around Rishi Sunak, very, very important in politics. But for Labour, this is a week which makes them, should make them, speed up still further, accelerate more. I think Keir Starmer doesn't get enough credit for the extraordinary journey he has taken Labour on from a party that seemed, frankly, out for the count, unelectable, impossible, all the way through to a party most people now expect to win the next election. It has been an extraordinary and very, very fast development, and he's done extremely well, but he can't give it up now. He can't drop the pace in any way. He needs to accelerate again, and he needs to think, I think, harder about how to win this election.